You know, I try not to repeat myself on this show, but I don't try very hard, which is why I end up repeating myself all the time. So the subject of so-called DINKS, uh, childless by choice couples who have a dual income and no kids, hence the acronym, is one that I have uh, revisited on multiple occasions. And in fact, you might think that I have said every last thing one could possibly say on the subject, which is undoubtedly the case. Uh, I've made my point about the DINKS and that there is, you know, there's not much else that needs to be added. But then over the weekend, uh, CNBC decided to release a mini documentary about the Dinks. It's titled Why More Americans Are Going Child Free. It already has over half a million views on YouTube. And I watched the video, and the video focuses mainly on one young married couple from Massachusetts who self identify as Dinks. Dink, 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 dink. Now, just as a fun exercise, I want you to imagine what a millennial Dink couple from Massachusetts might look like. What does the dink wife look like? Most importantly, what does the dink husband look like? Draw a picture in your mind. And now we'll watch the video and you will see that the image in your mind is exactly correct. You have used your psychic powers to see this couple before you actually saw them. We got married fairly young and we both just decided for many reasons we didn't want kids. And then at some point we heard the acronym dink and I think just really fell in love with it. Okay, first of all, I mean, that's exactly what you pictured, isn't it? You might have been slightly off on the wife. That was a little ambiguous. But uh, the husband, I mean, you had figured out. The long hair, the nose piercing, all of it just screams dink. Dinkelberg. I mean, it screams the kind of man who would confess to falling in love with the name dink. Dink. I like it. How is that possible? I mean, how is it that you heard dink? And he's like, wow, I love that. That is great. That's what I am. It resonates. It's a name. It sounds like a name that was invented by someone like me to make fun of you. Mr. Dink is really upset. But instead, they came up with it themselves, apparently, because they're a bunch of damned dinks. There are more Americans that are deciding not to have children, and it's purposeful. This new trend has led to the rise of a new type of household, more commonly referred to as dink. Dual income, no kids. Oh yeah, dual income, no kids. That's perfect for us. That's absolutely right. (laughs) Children are the death of net worth. Pretty crude, uh, but honestly very true. This household configuration of dual income partners living alone without children is on the rise. In 2022, it was around 43% of households, and that's about a 7% increase from a decade previously. In 2022, 43% of Americans surveyed said they'd want to get married. But just a little more than a quarter said they were sure about wanting children. The term dink is becoming more prominent now because of financial challenges. And they see children as just another financial challenge. What's so damn funny? Of course, they have a dog too, you know. Even looks, it looks like a, it looks like a dog, but it looks like a dink dog. It looks like a dog a dink would have. Just just, everything about it, their house, everything. They say children are just another financial challenge. That's all they are. The word just is is quite telling because there's apparently nothing else to say about new human life other than the fact that it's an economic burden. A child is a bill and nothing more. Yes, I'm only a bill. The idea that there, there may be more to life, that some things transcend material concerns, that not everything has a price tag, that there is more to life than the bottom line, None of that is taken into consideration at all. According to a 2023 survey of Dinks, finance played a major role in their decision to not have children. More than a quarter of respondents said they simply aren't able to financially support a child at the moment. When we advise clients about having children, we honestly don't even give them the full, real details and the real numbers. It's one of those things, if you actually see the math of it all, it might make you decide to not have children. It costs a family an estimated $310,605 to raise a child born in 2015 to age 18, adjusted for higher future inflation. And that doesn't even include the cost of college. Okay, now this really isn't uh, the point I want to focus on, but but it should be noted that everything you've just heard is nonsense. 33% of, of the dinks say they can't afford a child. Now, I believe that 33% said that in a survey, but what they're saying is ridiculous. I mean, there are families with significantly less financial means who are managing to raise multiple children and can still live perfectly comfortably and care for their children and themselves without the risk of starvation. Now, as a general rule, if you have decided that something is financially impossible for you, 
But then you look around and you see that literally billions of people throughout the history of the world have done this impossible thing with less financial means than you have at your disposal. That's a good indication that the problem isn't really your finances. If you're struggling with collections, medical bills, credit cards, or personal loans, you need to check out PDS Debt. PDS Debt is an innovative one-stop shop to guide you on your journey to freedom from debt. There's uh, no one-size-fits-all solution to becoming debt-free, which is why PDS Debt offers multiple programs and solutions tailored to your specific needs, budgets, and future financial goals. Whether you're going to go through a serious hardship or just can't seem to keep up with the high interest on your credit cards, PDS Debt will craft a custom solution to give you instant relief and start saving you money. If you're making payments every month on your debt and your balances aren't going down, this program is for you. PDS Debt provides options that consolidate your debt into one low monthly payment. Anybody with $10,000 or more in eligible debt qualifies and there is no minimum credit score required. They want to help anyone with good and bad credit, doesn't matter. Plus. With PDS Debt, you'll save thousands in interest uh, and fees and pay off your debt in a fraction of the time. PDS Debt is offering my listeners a free debt analysis, and it only takes 30 seconds. Head over to pdsdebt.com slash Walsh to get your free debt assessment today. That's pdsdebt.com slash Walsh today. Also, okay, I mean, you hear these figures all the time. It costs, it costs $87 million to raise a child for one day. Like, it, it, no, it doesn't. It does not cost $310,000 to raise a child to the age of 18. It doesn't. That's almost 20 grand a year, okay? By that logic, I should be spending $120,000 a year just on my kids. I assure you, I am not. In fact, when we had our twins, I was making $44,000 a year. This was 10 years ago. Now, granted, this was 10 years ago, okay, so there's been inflation, but that would still mean that, that nearly all of my income was going to my kids. I mean, we would have been homeless and starving, but we weren't. I mean, it is more than possible to raise a child on significantly less than 20 grand a year. It just might mean that you're driving a less fancy car and you're buying a less fancy TV and you're going on less fancy vacations and you're learning how to actually make meals from scratch at home instead of ordering DoorDash five nights a week. I mean, you spent there are ways to raise children without spending over a quarter of a million dollars to do it. I know there are ways because, again, literally billions of humans since the dawn of the species have figured out how to do it. We're the only ones. It's like five minutes ago we all looked around as a, as a species and said, this is too expensive. We can't do this anymore. What have we been doing it the whole time? What do you mean it's too expensive? Seeing our friends really struggle with that balancing act because appreciate the flexibility that we have financially because we don't have children. Yes, that dude is reading a book titled Hot and Unbothered, okay? Now, I looked it up, and apparently the full title is Hot and Unbothered, How to Think About, Talk About, and Have the Sex You Really Want. So, so yes, behind the scenes here, okay? The CNBC crew came to this dink's house they wanted to get some B-roll of this couple sitting on the couch and pretending to read together, which is something they've, they've probably never done even once in real life, okay? They've never sat on the couch and read together. They're just on their phones all the time, not even looking at each other. Uh, but they wanted to get this. And so, and so this guy decided to pull hot and unbothered from the shelf for the scene. That's the kind of book that if you have it, you take it down from your shelf and you hide it under the couch when the film crew comes. It's not a book that you deliberately showcase. But then again, these are obviously not people who have much of a capacity for shame because they're dinks. We'll watch one more clip, uh, and I think that will be enough. Here it is. Besides saving on childcare, dinks can also fully reap the benefits of combining their finances. To look at both of our incomes coming in and see how we're able to handle all of that because we don't have extra finances with a child, it's much more comfortable. We get to focus more on the things that we want to do and, and saving a lot of that money for the future and worry less about the day-to-day the -day finances of the house and our bills. Money isn't the only expense that Dinks can save on. The free time is actually one of the biggest things for me. So we built me a little 
office slash bedroom out here. We definitely have some more expensive hobbies. I uh, build mechanical keyboards, like uh, computer keyboards in my spare time. And just parts and stuff for that can be very expensive. Not having children has given us the freedom to pursue other things. Remodeling our home, um, I'm a beekeeper. I'm really handy and I like doing stuff around the house. I wouldn't have the time to just do that after work if I feel like it, if I had, you know, a child to care for. I got all this extra time and money, they can't even update their kitchen. But, uh, let, let's review a few things here. First of all, uh, I have more than six months saved and I have six kids. We've also remodeled multiple homes. I've even kept bees. How hard can it be? Okay, all with kids. So they have not listed one single thing that people with kids can't do. They haven't listed one single thing that I myself haven't already done or am not currently doing. Besides building keyboards in my spare time. I haven't done that. I also don't have a separate bedroom from my wife, as this guy apparently does. I mean, because he's absolutely determined to fulfill every single last demeaning stereotype of a male millennial dink that he can think of. So when you hear this... this um, anti-natalist propaganda telling you about all the things you can't do when you have kids, it's always important to remember that it's a lie. I mean, again, there is nothing that these people can do that I can't or that you can't if you have kids. Now, in some cases, it may take more effort. It may take more planning. It may take more sacrifice, um, but it can be done. You can save money. You can plan for the future. You can have free time. You can be financially secure. You can even build keyboards if you want for some reason. You can do that too. Now, you may suffer misfortunes or, or, or setbacks that may make those things more difficult, but that can happen and will happen in one form or another, whether you have kids or not. But all that is beside the point. You know, arguing the case on financial terms is playing right into the dink hands, which is never good because you never know where their hands have been. Oh, Dinkelberg! Aren't you going to come over and give my wife a congratulatory hand touch? Even if financial security and prosperity is perfectly possible and attainable for families with children, and it is, it is still true that your life will be easier financially if you don't have kids. I mean, that is true. I don't deny that. Kids don't cost or don't need to cost $310,000 to raise, but they do cost something. I mean, it ain't cheap. So yes, in the end, it's true that the dinks will avoid certain financial difficulties. For now, anyway. And why is the carpet all wet, Todd? I don't know, Margo. You know, until they're old and the money runs out and they end up alone in a nursing home because they don't have any kids to care for them or support them. But for now, it will be easier, sure. And that is the only selling point. You'll notice that every time we get this kind of advertisement for the Dink lifestyle, the only thing they ever want to talk about is the finances. The, the supposed benefits of being a dink all fall into one bucket. That's it. And even in that bucket, the benefits are greatly exaggerated. But the point is that they don't have anything to say outside of the money. They never even bother claiming that being a dink will give you a more purposeful life or a more exciting and interesting life. They never say that it'll bring more meaning into your life or more love into your life. They don't even try to claim that the dinks have greater opportunities for joy or fulfillment. They certainly don't mention anything about legacy. You know, joy, meaning, love, legacy, purpose. Th these aren't even part of the sales pitch, which, which really tells you what you need to know. Yes, some aspects of life will be easier for a while if you don't have kids, but like, why are you living a life in the first place? What is the point of it? What should you be doing with your life? What, what gives life meaning? You pass butter. Oh my God. These are questions that the dinks in that video don't seem to have asked themselves. They're too busy reading self-help sex books in their separate bedrooms, gloating over how easy their lives are while never stopping to consider what life is or what they are meant to do with it or what will make it meaningful. And that is why they are today, once again, Canceled. And I'm so alone.